Hello, I'm Will. This is Mike. We're the Tabletop Donkeys. Hello. And welcome back to Warhammer 40,000 Conquest, where we've got issue 61 for you today. As usual, if you want to skip straight ahead to the battle report, there'll be a link and time code in the description. But due to a fairly large printing error, the mission that comes with this issue is basically not possible to play. So in the description, you'll also find our idea for a mission that we made up to go with it, because we had to give you something this week. This issue comes with a set of Imperial Objectives. Two of the four sprues that come in the box set Urban Conquest. Then having a look inside, we've got some stuff about the Thousand Sons Legion, who were a legion of space marines in the Horus Heresy, who turned traitor with their Primarch Magnus the Red. They're all highly skilled psychers, certainly most of them, but that was effectively their downfall. Right, and then 10,000 years later, they serve the god Zinch, and this stuff here is all activity of their cults all over the galaxy. There's Magnus the Red himself, uh, there's um, artwork on the left, and on the right his model, which is huge. That's his, him as a demon. Demon Primarch, and then more models here, the Thousand Suns range. That's all the lore we get for this issue, because we're straight on to how to build the Imperial Objectives. And they're all, most of them are fairly easy to put together, they don't have many parts. Yeah, I mean, the only annoying bit was to get the little uh, pylons off, because the spirit joined it in an inconvenient place, so it's quite easy to accidentally chop bits off. And then painting them, well, there's actually quite a lot of instructions here, because they're all slightly different, but there's quite a lot of silver and gold to go on them. There's a little uh, medical servitor who has some red parts and flesh, the reliquary as well, uh, gold and red, and then there's ammo boxes which are painted in the same way as the ones we had before, and indeed they actually tell you to go back and... Whether they, really, they, yeah. you can optionally go and wash and dry brush the old ammo crates just to make it all consistent with the guide there. Yeah, because when we were originally told how to paint the ammo crates we didn't have a lot of the paints. a long time nature. ago. Yeah. That's all we have for the contents of this issue now, so we're going to get on to our custom mission straight away. So before we get into our mission for this issue, we need to learn about our new battle mat. So an extended part of the Mechanicus War Zone. And as you can see here, it's got all the terrain, the printed terrain explained on it, and it's uh, it's all the stuff from the cargo deck from a long time ago, plus a couple of the servo haulers here. So a lot of the rules for the terrain uh, we've all seen before. So the big cargo containers blocked on our site, and you can stand on them and shoot the storm bolters if you want. The servo haulers, one there. And well, there at the moment they just block line of sight, but uh, we'll be getting them in the next issue, so presumably we'll get uh, more complete rules from them. Then we've got ammo crates down here and barrels up on the top. And it says here that they block line of sight, but we're going to use the optional rules just for consistency's sake, so that you get um, you can shoot over them. Uh, you get cover if your every model is within an inch. And uh, for the ammo crates, you can reroll ones to hit, and the barrels. Uh, if you roll a six plus on your armor save, uh, you might take a mortal wound. And then we also have uh, brief descriptions of our new objectives. So it does give you a little text about what they actually are, but uh, they don't actually have any special rules. They work exactly like the objective markers did previously. So uh, regardless of how big they are, you always measure from the center and models can move over and through them freely. They don't impede movement in any way. And so we've got our fiction for this issue mission as well. So the Space Marines are abandoned in Kalon and are attempting to evacuate the, city, the civilian population and what's left of it from uh, some of the nearby spaceports, one of which being Jorgengast, or Jorgengast, however you pronounce it, where the Death Guard are trying to uh, take the spaceport before the Marines can evacuate. And there are still a number of Space Marine relics and me Mechanicus technology left about, which the Space Marines have to stop the Death Guard from stealing. So we'll head into the mission description, and... Uh, uh. So immediately off the bat it says that this mission includes an extra piece of printed terrain for us to use, but um... Yeah, it's apparently not there. And uh, the map is actually correct, but it doesn't show this printed terrain anywhere. And if you go down to the forces, it also says we need three units of ten pox augers. So apparently all of this text is for the mission for issue 63, presumably. But the map for this, it would be correct for this mission, because it shows all our new objectives on it. So we're just going to make up a mission. So for our mission, which we're uh, working title, is Supermarket Sweep. You can see here we've got our 10 objectives, the four pylons across the middle and then three others on each side. So there's no deployments, as you can see the Death Guard enter from this side and the Space Marines enter from that side. So you both players roll off and then the winner can decide whether they want to go first or second. And then they move all their units onto the board. And for victory conditions we're going to say that each objective is worth one victory points and uh, any unit can pick up an objective as long as it's within three inches of it uh, and it is unengaged at the end of the opposing turn. 
So if it's my turn and I move a unit within three inches of an objective, uh, that unit can pick it up at the end of the Death Guard turn. Uh, we're also going to have a victory point for killing the enemy Warlord and another victory point for the first player to eliminate a unit. And the game will last for five battle rounds. So yeah, we'll, we'll do the army overviews for the armies we, we came up with. Uh, we did play test this mission once and it seemed reasonably balanced, but uh, and then we'll go into rolling off to see who goes first. So here's the Space Marine army that uh, we came up with for this mission. So we have the Primaris Chaplain, five Reavers, five Scouts, and I've decided to give them shotguns just for a bit of variety, ten Intercessors, the Land Speeder, and I've gone for the anti tank loadout, and three bikes. And my Warlord obviously will be the Chaplain. I'm going to give him the Iron Resolve trait, the extra wound, and six plus. Discussing the resilient essentially, because uh, I think we're going to be too spread out for Storm of Fire, and uh, there's only one Death Guard character, so I'm not too scared of him. So here's the Death Guard army we came up for for this mission. So in the front we've got the Noxious Blightbringer, and there's two squads of five Plague Marines, and you can see that one of the Plague Marine squads has a champion with a plasma gun and a blight launcher, the other one has a plasma gun and a champion with a plasma gun. The Ten Cultists, the Chaos Rhino, and the Fetid Bloat Drone. And my Warlord will obviously be the Noxious Bitebringer, and we're going to go for Arch Contaminator as his Warlord trait, basically because none of the others are any good for him. So here you can see we've got our board fully set up with all three battle mats together. So starting with the new one, uh, it's the same size as the other ones obviously, so it's about 34 and a half inches long, and about 22 and a half inches wide, so the whole thing, all three together, is about 56 inches wide and 34 inches long, so it's not. And you can see we've got our servo holders there. We got some, had some extra. And you can also see we've got our objectives placed. So along the center of the board, you can see there's the four pylons. And then there's one down here in the bottom of the Mechanicus zone. The uh, little creepy robot on its uh, surgery table down here in the middle of the city, bottom of the city. Relic sword in the bottom right of the spaceport map. The scatter field projector in the top right of the, in the top right, at the top of the spaceport. Some ammo crates in the top of the city, and the uh, communications pylon in the top of the mechanic zone. So now we're going to roll off to see who chooses to go first. And I've got to say in the introduction, but uh, we have three command points each as well as we usually do in these scenarios from the magazine. So rolling off, I got a five, six. I think I'll go second. Okay. So we'll head into Space Marines turn one. So since I'm going first and I won't have anything to shoot at, I might as well advance all of my units. So I'll roll all, for all of them now. So the Intercessors get to go an extra one. The Reavers, an extra two. The Scouts, an extra five. The Land Speeder, an extra five. And the Chaplain, an extra two. And uh, the Bikes obviously don't need to roll because they get to advance the full six. So I've finished my movement, we'll start at this end. The scouts have moved up 11 inches from this corner to contest the objective. The Reavers and the Chaplain have moved up over here to head for that objective. The Intercessors currently contest this objective and are heading towards that one. Then the Land Speeder contests the uh, Reliquary objective and the bikes have whooshed on to get towards that objective. But that'll be the end of my turn because there's nothing to shoot at, so it'll be on to Death Guard turn one. I'm going to advance everything as well, because most of my guys won't be in range, and obviously I need to take objectives too. So we'll start with the Cultists, they get to go an extra one. Then we'll do the Rhino, which is going to have the squad of Plague Marines with a plasma gun inside it, so that gets to go an extra three. Bloat Drone, an extra one. Blightbringer, who I guess to roll two dice, he gets to go an extra four. And finally the other squad of Plague Marines with the Blight Launcher on, on foot, an extra three. So the Cultists have come on over on this side of the board, heading towards that objective. Bloat Drone has come on there, Rhino is in the middle, like that, and it's within three inches of that objective. And then we've got the squad of Plague Marines with the Blight Launcher over here, and the Noxus Blight Bringer behind them. And I'm going to play Cloud Flies on that squad of Plague Marines there. Okay, so that's one crown point spent for the Death Guard. In the shooting phase, uh, the only gun that can shoot is this Blight Launcher here, it's going to fire at the Land Speeder. So it has two shots hitting on threes, re-rolling ones because we're next to some ammo boxes. So two hits, wounding on threes. Rerolling ones. That's two wounds. Rerolling everything because of arch contaminated. Oh, that's true, yeah. Five plus armor saves. Made one, failed one. I'll take that. D3 damage. Three. So, land speed is down to three wounds. 
And the Rhino will fire off its smoke launchers, since it can't do anything else in the shooting phase. Mm -hmm. uh, but that'll be it for my turn, because I can't do anything else either. Yeah, so it's the end of, at the end of that turn. Uh, I have three units that are the next objectives, and are unengaged, so I'll collect this objective with the scouts, this objective with the intercessors, and this objective with the land speeder. And that puts me up to three victory points. And we'll head into Space Marines turn two. So, first thing on my turn, the scouts are going to advance. We get to move an extra four inches. That's ten. So the scouts have finished their advance like that, and they are just in range of that objective. Everyone else has moved up normally, so the Reavers and the Chaplain have moved up behind this pike for a bit of cover, uh, in case anything comes out of that rhino. Intercessors have moved up normally as well, so they can shoot at things. The land speeder will stay where it is, and the bikes have moved up to be within three inches of that objective. So onto the shooting phase, I'll start with the intercessors. Uh, they can all see a cultist, so they'll shoot at them. So we have ten shots hitting on threes. Uh, that will be eight hits, and then wounding on threes. Oh, it's only three wounds. Mm. Well, it'll be three dead cultists because mm. they don't get cover. So I'll take away the three useless smelly people from the back. Next I'll do the Reavers. Um, they're just going to fire their pistols at the bloke drone. Five shots hitting on threes. Four hits. Wounding on fives. Oh, two wounds. AP minus one. Right, two, two failed arm saves. And discuss the user again. Made one, so down to nine. And the Chaplain will fire it at the bloke drone as well with his absorber bolt pistol. So one shot hitting on three. He missed. Next, the land speeder will fire the multi melter at those plague marines because they are the closest enemy unit, even though they've got cloud flies, and it's the only, uh, they're the only unit in range of that gun. And it will fire the missile launchers at the blow drone. Slight adjustment there. It's actually going to fire frag missiles at the cultists. So I'll start with the multi melter. One shot hitting on a three. He missed. And then two d six potential uh, two d six shots at the cultists. Six. Hitting on threes. Wow. One hit, wound on a three. Yeah, and a six plus arm save. No. One more dead cultist. Yeah, I'll take one further from the objective. And finally, the bikes. Um, I think they're slightly closer to the noxious Blightbringer, so they'll shoot at him. We've got six bolt gun shots hitting on threes. Four hits, wound on fives. Nothing. So I'm not do, going to declare any charges. And that'll be the end of my, well, first there'll be a morale test for the cultists before the end of my turn. Yep, so they lost four, and that makes ten. So that's another four running away. Yeah. Now we'll take the champion, because um, yeah, his leadership's kind of relevant now. Really relevant now. And then at the end of my turn, uh, the Death Guard can also collect this objective, because the Rhino is unengaged. Yeah. And that gives them a victory point. But that'll be the end of my turn. On to Death Guard, turn two. So the two cultists have moved up here. Try and get hide from there, but I don't think it's going to save them. But if they do survive, they'll take that objective. Bloke drone's moved here, so it's within three inches of that objective and within range of the scouts, in case I decide to shoot them. These plague marines got out the rhino and moved up here, like that. Uh, the rhino itself has driven on top of the tank trap, because it is allowed to do that for some reason. And then we've got these five plague marines over here, amongst these boxes, and the bloke bringer up there, who is within range of the objective. We'll start with these two cultists, so they're going to shoot at the scouts, because it's the only target they can see. So we've got four shots with auto guns, hitting on fours, two hits, wounding on the fives. Nope. Next we will do these plague marines, they're going to fire at the reavers. Um, man over here will chuck a crack grenade, because the guy won't have cover from him. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have plasma guns and bolt guns. Yeah, but we will have cover from all that. Yes. We'll do the crack grenade first. Uh, it hit, and it did not wound. Then we've got two plasma guns, we'll supercharge both of them. So we've got the ammo boxes, so the champion... Rolled one, re-rolling. Oh, he oh. killed himself. Oh, well, that's a good start. But he got one hit. The other plasma gun got one hit, so two hits, wounding on twos. That's two wounds. Uh, five plus armor saves. Now I won't be rolling that, so it'll be two dead reavers and a dead champion. That reaver and that reaver. Then two bolt guns, two shots each, re-rolling ones to hit. Get three hits. Wounding on fours. Two. Two plus armor saves because we are in cover. Made both. Yeah. We'll do the effective blow drone next. It will shoot the scouts. So it's got two d6 automatic hits. Nine. Wounding on threes, rolling ones. That's one one. Nope, oh, that's still two. So that's seven wounds at minus one. Five bosses. And he made two. 
And will we roll one just to see if they can survive? No. So that'll be the dead scouts and first blood for the death guard. We do this other squad of plague marines over here now. They're going to shoot at the bikes. Yep. We'll start with another supercharged plasma gun because I haven't learnt my lesson. Two shots. That's a one. Rerolling it. No, phew. He actually did kill himself. It was a four. And um, moving on threes. Now it's one wound. Uh, six plus armor save. Nope. It's a dead bike. Then we have a blight launcher. Threes. Rerolling ones. That's one hit. And on a three. Yep. Five plus. Nope. D3 damage. Three. Take away the other regular bike. And then six shots from bolt gun. On threes. So we'll hit. And then on fives. One. Uh, three plus armor save. Which I failed. So <laughs> biker takes a wound. Sarge down to a wound. Okay. Well, the rhino will fire at him then. So we can okay. take that last wound off. <laughs> so two shots from the combi bolter. Yeah. Just double six to hit. Wounding on fives. Now double one. Oh, yeah. wow. Then the havoc launcher gets two shots, which hit on fours because we moved. No. Lightbringer isn't in range. Yep. And it's all my shooting. Yep. So we're going to the charge phase. Yep. So we're going to do these four remaining play marines, they're going to charge those reavers there. Okay, we'll overwatch with a shot grenade and two pistols. Shot grenade, D3 shots. One. Hit on six. Nope. Two pistols. No. And their charge distance, three inches. Wow. So they move in like that. Um, and I'll also declare a charge with the rhino on the intercessors. Okay, so we'll overwatch with a crack grenade and then nine bolt rifles. So the crack grenade misses. Then we got 18 bolt rifle shots. Uh, three. Yep. We're only on fives. Two. Four plus arm saves. Nope. That's down to eight wounds on the rhino. But then it will just move in yep. like so. The chaplain might as well heroically intervene because it wasn't declared as a charge target, so he can't be attacked. Yep. And then it's on to the fight phase. Yep. Start with the plague marines. They're gonna, well, they all have to attack the reavers because they didn't declare the chaplain as a target. Yep. We have a whopping four attacks hitting on threes. That's three. Wounding on fours. We roll ones because mm. plague knives. Two wounds. Two three plus armor saves. Maybe. And we've got the rhino. Uh, three attacks hitting on sixes. Nothing. Um, I'll start with the reavers. Two attacks hitting on threes. Re rolling ones. Oh, yeah, sorry, re rolling everything because of the chaplain. Ten hits. Then wounding on fives. It's four. Three plus armor saves. Made all of them. Then we'll do the chaplain next. Four attacks, and he got twos, rerolling everything. Four hits. Moody on fours. One. Uh, it's minus one, I think, so it's uh, no, it failed that, and it's two damage. So you could have played. Just use him. And the intercessors pile in as much as we can. We can just about get everyone in. And uh, I'll spend a command point to do death to the traitors as well. So we have 21 attacks hitting on threes and sixes are extra. So six extra attacks that generate another three hits. 18 hits, wounding on fives. Not very many, there's three. Uh, we know, uh, sorry, armor saves, I failed one, so it down to seven wounds. So these plague marines took two casualties, one of them was the champion, so they're only leadership seven, so they have to take a morale test. Oh dear. Another plague ring runs away. And then at the end of the turn, I can collect this objective with my remaining bike, which puts me up to four victory points. And with that over, it's into Space Marines turn three. So, in my movement phase, the Reavers and the Chaplain are going to stay locked in melee. The Intercessors are going to fall back away from the Rhino. The Land Speeder is going to stay where it is. And then the Bike, Lone Bike Sergeant, is going to make a mad dash to that objective. So uh, one thing I actually forgot to uh, mention in the uh, rules for this scenario which uh, is that if a objective is contested, regardless of how many models actually contest the objective, uh, neither side can claim it. So since the intercessors and the rhino contest this objective, neither of us can pick it up at the end of the turn. And the same would go for this, the bike and the uh, light bringer over there. So we're on to the shooting phase, I'll start down here with the reavers, they're going to shoot their pistols at the uh, playing rings. Three shots hitting on threes. One, really on a five. Nope. Uh, Chaplain will do the same thing. He missed again. The land speeder will put everything into the rhino. We have the multi melter hitting on a three. He hit. Woody on a three. Hit wounded. D6 damage straight up. 
Well, it's one, but I will spend a command point to re-roll that one. Into four. a four. It's down to three. And then we've got two missile launchers hitting on threes. One hit, wounded on three. And that didn't wound. And then the intercessors will pull their shots into the rhino, so one will fire, throw a crack grenade, and then the rest will fire their bolt rifles. Crack grenade hitting on a four. Hit, wounded on a five. Nope. 18 shots hitting on four. Not very good. Yeah, eight hits. And wound you on fives. Ooh, four wounds. Four, four plus armor saves. Uh, I fail one, so it's down to two. And finally, the biker sergeant all the way over there will throw a crack grenade at the noxious bike bringer. So hitting on a three. You hit. Wound you on a three. No. So I'm not going to declare any charges since the biker contests the objective. So on to the fight phase. I get to pick first, so I'll pick the chaplain to go, because he might manage to finish off those plague marines. Four attacks hitting on twos, re-rolling ones, re-rolling everything. Four hits, winning on fours. One again, Let's see if you can get average at one game. Uh, I've made my save there. Then I get to pick and they'll both attack the reavers, because I can only get one attack on the chaplain. Yep. So two attacks, double two. Oh. <laughs> and then the reavers get to fight, and they've got ten attacks. So it's like sitting on threes, we roll ones. Are we rolling everything, sorry, because of the chaplain? So that'd be eight hits. And we're only on fives. Wow. Not a one. Uh, so that'll be the end of my turn. No morale checks. Uh, but the Death God don't get to pick up either of those objectives because I can test them. No, uh, but I do get these two. But you do get those two. So we're up to four apiece as we head into Death Guard turn three. First thing that happens is that the Rhino might self-repair on a six. No. Ooh, so close. Uh, then I'll advance these cultists, see if they can make it to that objective. Not with a one, they won't. I'm going to re-roll it with a command point, because I think I only need two. Oh, four is enough. So that gets them to there, and they are within range of the objective. Mm-hmm. When the Blood Drone has moved over here, it has not advanced. It's going to stay there, like that. And these two Blade Marines have fallen back from the Reavers. The Rhino will stay where it is, because it's so damaged it can only move three inches anyway. These Plague Marines have come over here towards the Intercessors, and the Blightbringer has moved roughly there. He's still contesting the objective, or at least where the objective is supposed to be. I'll start the shooting phase with the Cultists, so I'll shoot the Reavers, because they're the only thing in range. And they're not in rapid fire, so two shots on falls, one hit. We're going to five. Nope. We'll do the Noxious Blightbringer next. He's going to fire a non-supercharged shot at the bike. Makes sense. On a three. Ah, oh, next we'll do these Plague Marines. They're going to fire at the Intercessors. We'll do a crack grenade, but I'm going to do the supercharged plasma gun first. Yeah. So two shots on threes. Down to twos. Double wound. Six plus. Nope. Two dead Intercessors. Check these two. And we've got a Blight Launcher. Two shots. Uh, Rerolling ones, because the arrow box. Two hits. Rerolling threes. Rerolling ones. Two wounds. Five plus armor saves. Come on. And three damage and two damage. So, so two more dead intercessors. Then we have crack grenade, which hit and wounded. Four plus armor save. Well, I made one at last. And finally, four shots from bolt guns, three rolling ones. In the box. No, three. Wounding on fours, two. Three plus. Make one third one. Intercessor takes a wound. Put it on that guy, I suppose. Rhino will shoot over here at this bike because it's going to be fairly useless anyway, so just go for the, the long shot. Two shots from the combi bolter on fives, one hit, wound him on a five as well. Oh, it did. Uh, three plus armor save, made it. Then the Havoc Launcher gets two shots, these also hit on fives. No. Now finally, we've got the Fetid Blight Drone, shoot the Reavers. 2d6 hits, 10. <laughs> wound him on threes, rolling ones. No, that's all the twos. Mm. That is six wounds. Six, six four plus armor saves. Yeah, two dead reavers. Two dead reavers. So Sarge survives. And then on to charge phase, the Rhino will charge those intercessors. Yep. So one will throw a crack grenade and then five bolt rifles. Crack grenade. Nope. Ten shots here on sixes. Two. Only on fives. Ah. Two. Oh, oh dear. Four plus. Two four plus arm saves. Oh, phew, it's got oh. one wound left. <laughs> and then it's charged. Yeah. I, I mean, it's just going to make it in. I'm not going to roll it. Yeah. Two inches, so it's in. And then the Plague Marines will charge as well. Yep. Yeah. Bring me the two. 
Oh, actually, they, so they made their charge just about. And the blight bringer will charge the last bike. Um, he'll never watch with a crack grenade. We hit. <laughs> Wounded on three. You wounded. I am behind cover, at least, from his point of view. But I still failed my save. D3, unless you want to reroll it. No, I'll keep it clown point. D3 damage. Two. Ignoring them on fives. No, I did. No, we go. He needs to roll. He needs to, well, I'm not running very high for charges, no. but that's enough. Yeah, it's enough to get around that box. Yeah, he's in. And the blow drone will charge the chaplain as well. Okay. Move up to the crack grenade. Nope. Um, yeah, it's in. Yeah. Wow. Start the fight phase with this. Parlin to bring the reaver in as well. Yeah. He has three attacks on the chaplain. They hit on fours. Oh, they all did. Ugh. They wound on three. Three rolling ones. That's two. Two. Four plus invulnerable saves. Made one, failed one. Uh, D3 damage. Wow. Uh, six plus resilience. No, down to five. Then I'll do these plague marines, I suppose. So yeah, they just end up like that. Attack. We'll do the knives first because there's a guy on one wound. Hitting on threes. Are we rolling one? No, not we rolling anything. Sorry. Yeah. Hitting on threes. So that's two hits. Winning on fours. Nope, nothing. Uh, then power fist on fours. Two hits. No death of fourth emperor. Cause minus one to hit. Two wounds. Six plus. No. So wounded man dies, and then the second guy will take three wounds. Two casualties. And then the rhino is left. It has only one attack now that it's so damaged and it hits on a six. No. And then we're finally the Noxious Blightbringer. He has three attacks hitting on threes. They all hit. They win on fives. So There's only strength four. We're rerolling ones because it is a plague weapon. Well, we're nope. rerolling everything because it's a plague weapon. Oh, yeah, rerolling everything because it is Warlord trait. Then in the box. No, no armor penetration. Three plus. Oh, he died. So, Blake Sarge actually goes down. And he'll just consolidate to there, just try and get him a bit close to those intercessors, but mainly to get cover. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to bother rolling my hitbacks, I'm just going to concede at this point, because I can't stop you getting that objective. Uh, probably going to lose that fight, because the intercessors took a million casualties this turn, and now someone's not going to run away. And I can't really stop you getting that one. No, probably not. So, yeah, I'm guaranteed an extra two points at the end of your turn, most likely. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll say we are on four victory points each, but we'll call that a Death Guard victory, so we'll recap this for you now. So that wasn't the mission for issue 61 of Warhammer 40,000 Congress, just one we made up, but uh, how did you think it went? Oh, it didn't go too bad. Um, <laughs> I think it helped that I rolled not too bad and you didn't roll brilliantly. Yeah, I, but, um, I think others rolled particularly well, but I think I rolled just worse. Yeah, I think so. Um, just getting, what, six shots for the missile launch and getting one hit. Yeah. I think could have. Uh, there's a couple of points that did uh, that. Uh, so, say if you'd killed my biker sergeant, it would have denied me an objective, and I'd killed your cultist, that would have denied you an objective. And if my scouts made one more armor save again, you would have had to possibly charge a blow drone into them to deny me another. The rhino was out of one wound as well. Yeah. It's just things like that where it's just a little bit one way or the other, and it could have tipped. But um, in a way, there's not much to say about the way the game went because, well, really, we just kind of made it up. So. Yeah. Well, I guess we can talk about the state of the thing in the first place. Oh uh, yeah, I mean it's a pretty bad start to a any new ball to get a, a mission that you can't actually play on it. This is the first issue we've had where it's been completely unplayable. We've had yeah. issues before where the mission there have been things we've had to doctor slightly yeah, because they don't make been sense. A, been a typo like it doesn't tell you how many units of five plague marines you have. Yeah, or it the just, map's just not told you a distance, so we have to look at the map and figure yeah. out exactly where the objective's supposed to be based on the picture stuff like but that. But this is a total you can't actually play this because yeah, the text is wrong yeah. as a yeah. the mission. I mean, assume all the text and stuff is for issue 63. That would make sense with the three squads of 10 poxwalkers. But even then, the map would still be wrong, so it doesn't have the printed terrain piece anyway. So if you did have the terrain piece, you wouldn't know where it would go. I mean, it'd be interesting to see if we actually get this mission at any time, if they issue a correction or something. Yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, again, it's, this would be a case of uh, if you're in a different country to the UK, uh, when you finally get to issue 61, is, is this what you get as well? Or do they fix it? But yeah, I mean, we did actually, we played this a couple of times before playing it on camera. So we did actually get a little bit of an insight into what they mm. presumably go through. Yeah, presumably they play test the scenarios. Yeah, we have speculated before that one or two of the scenarios are not particularly balanced as though they didn't actually try them themselves. Um, so it's interesting to see kind of from the other side, you know. Yeah, because we did, we placed it, tested it once. And originally we made it so that you picked up objectives immediately by just moving over them. But that just meant loads of objectives got picked up in the first turn. And with only 10 objectives on offer, plus First Blood and Slay the Warlord, uh, it was obvious he was going to win right from the outset, mm. pretty much. 
So we changed it to be... We, we've had something similar, or I can't remember which issue it was, but we had similar missions before where you've had to stand there and be unengaged. I think it's something like the first mission we had, the apothecary. We had to collect gene seed, but you weren't allowed to be engaged. Yeah, so we kind of nabbed that from there. It meant that um, the game goes on longer, pretty much. It's just more Yeah, I mean, it would have gone to at least turn four if I hadn't conceded. Mm. And then choice of armies as well, I guess. we. So I think we'll put all the, the army list and our oh, rules for this mission in the description and stuff. Rather than thinking, oh, what's the best unit I can take for this sort of yeah. thing, we kind of tried to go with slightly more thematic, more interesting armies, in the sense that, you know, both sides have two fast units and... A character and, and then yeah. three infantry units. I mean, I included the scouts cause, um, just because they were in the fiction beforehand. Mm. Stuff that made sense, like the land speeders, the bikes, the rhino, and the blow drone. Rather than just, I've like, just taken all my best units. Mm. I think we did initially try giving the Death Guard the power of light spawn, but we decided that he was too good. Now we're deploying all the long engines. We're actually much closer to each other than we were on the previous battle map. Mm. Which means that the power of spawn can actually basically get across the board if he's in the rhino. Well, actually, that's a point as well. Of course, we now have a 50% extra um, yeah. play space, as it were. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we actually decided to go for six aside, essentially so that there were enough units to spread out and have a kind yeah. of interesting game, really, because with a board of this size and that many objectives, we actually wanted enough units to do stuff. Well, the points and power are actually relatively balanced as well, which is why I have stuff like the chaplain. Um, and technically, we don't know how to choose armies yet from yeah. the existing <laughs> forces, so rather than what can I take for this much power... Kind of went with something that just seemed vaguely interesting, I guess. And um, well, I do like. Well, it's nice to see all the cargo deck terrain again. I guess get more use out of it, and uh, lots of cover and line of sight blocking terrain as well. It's much more interesting than the Mechanicus board, at least. Yeah, and it's nice that we've got all the terrain already, apart from two things that will actually come in yeah. the next issue. So unlike the previous one, where yeah, where we've had to wait quite a little while to be able to finish the board. Yeah. Although that said, there is some more terrain which presumably will come out. We'll put on the blank side. Well, I'm assuming they'll yeah. have us make our own battlefields at some point. Mm. It's interesting to have a board this size now. We'll see what they come up with, but there's several different arrangements of these maps you can yeah, do. Yeah, and I'd ho- hopefully they move them all around a bit. Not just this low. It's not going to be this layout the whole time. No, so we'll see how it affects certain units because we've spoken before about how certain limitations of units that you won't see on bigger games as well might start to become apparent. Things like the Lord of Contagion uh, are really slow and the Tentacle. Yeah, it's probably going to be harder to deploy the Lord of Contagion since you yeah. basically have to commit to a two thirds of the board because mm. he's never going to get to the other third. Yeah. Stuff like the land speeder and the bikes might get improve in use. Yeah, and they'll come into their own. Their speed will actually be relevant. And it's, there are distances long enough that things like light launchers and things are going to be out of range. Yeah, especially if we can play the long way down the table. And I guess you might as well talk about uh, the objectives we've actually got. Uh, oh, yes. They're actually slightly different from the ones on the big poster of everything you get. Um, those ones, were, I think, were called the Sector Imperialis objectives, but they're not actually solved anymore. And they were available separately, whereas these ones are from uh, Urban Conquest, which is a sort of 60 pound box set it comes with a terrain and big rule book for urban fighting I know these markers had extra rules in that but uh, in our case they're just simple objectives you could quite easily come up with rules for some of these if you wanted to, to make them more interesting as well like say this scatterfield projector gives you cover if you're within six inches of it or something yeah normally you can't actually buy these separately so I mean it's uh, nice to have them like this sort of thing is not something I'd ever buy myself I and mean, mm. if I really wanted objective markers I'd probably actually just make some out of spare bits but I'm yeah. saying that as a someone who's been playing Warhammer for quite a while, so I actually help spare bits. If you're a new player, then I guess it, this is nice stuff to have. And um, they are quite yeah, nice little bits. That'd be good for, if you like making your own terrain or dioramas and things, they fit with that. Or if you could buy these separately, this is a good sort of stocking filler as a gift for someone that they might not necessarily buy themselves. Mm. But yeah, if, uh, so we will put uh, all the rules and stuff in the description. So if you if you decide to have a go, um, feel free to edit any of the stuff we did. Uh, if you like this content, please leave a like and subscribe, and leave any comments. Um, if you had your own mission ideas, let us know. If you have, if you decided to play our version of this mission, um, leave us some feedback. How you got on and all that? We've been the Tabletop Donkeys, and we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>